Hi everybody, thanks for joining Soft Magnetics Hard Topics. And today we're going to go over some questions that we've gotten on a few of our other videos. The first one being, when should you use 31 versus 43 or other materials when it comes to frequency ranges? So 31 and 43 are actually kind of a tricky one, to be honest, because they cover, if you look on our, you know, most of our literature, they cover pretty similar frequency ranges. Um, 31's rated from 1 to 300, 43 is rated from 25 to 300 off the top of my head. So you would kind of think that there's almost no reason to use one versus another. Um, save for if you're going down to one megahertz, obviously, then 31 is going to be the clear winner. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, that's, that's their ratings in practice. There are other differences to those two materials aside from frequency ranges. So if you were to pick, I don't know, let's say 200 megahertz between a equivalent size 43 and 31 part, likely the 31 part may have a couple ohms more impedance. Um, but likely they're going to be very similar to each other. So you might choose 43 over 31 for reasons that aren't strictly based on impedance or frequency range. So one of the important distinctions between those two materials is that 43 is nickel zinc, whereas 31 is manganese zinc. And what does that mean? <laughs> um, so there's a couple things. So if it's a differential mode application with somewhat significant um, bias currents to it, you may want to go to that 43 despite it actually being a few ohms lower in impedance because it's going to do rate less at various bias currents. So you may actually wind up with a higher impedance part in your application, even though you know an impedance analyzer that these all get tested on may suggest otherwise because it's not factoring that in. Um, over temperature performance can be a factor. Another factor that's pretty important and an important distinction between manganese zinc and nickel zinc materials is manganese zinc materials are conductive. So if you're using a toroidal type core or, you know, a, um, you know, a, any kind of a, a cylindrical core that you're going to wind with multiple turns, um, if there's a nick in any of those wires, potentially you can short through a manganese zinc core relatively easily, whereas nickel zinc core um, has a material bulk resistivity of, you know, or motors of, you know, hundreds of mega ohm centimeters, whereas you're talking kilo ohms or less for manganese zinc. So that's going to look like a, you know, kind of like a short relative to a nickel zinc. Um, you know, that aside, the temperature derating curves may be more favorable on one versus another. So there's, you know, there's a bunch of reasons that you would, you would use one for another. Um, but if none of those other things are a factor, um, they're both pretty interchangeable. I tend to go towards 31. Um, but you know, either is probably going to work well. Oh, and other, other frequency ranges, too, you asked about, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so those two are kind of the, I don't know, you want to call them workhorse materials, so they cover that whole kind of center broadband range. Above and below that, the main ones that you'll come across, at least as far as the larger geometries, will be 75 material. That's low-frequency stuff. Um, also manganese zinc. That's typically true with most manganese zincs. They're going to be low-frequency, and nickel will be high. Um, 75 covers in a couple hundred kilohertz range into the low tens of megahertz. Um, usually around five megahertz, you're better off with 31. But if, you know, it's kind of about the range that you're trying to cover, not just one specific frequency. Although it could just be one specific frequency. And above 43 material, you have 61. Um, 61 is, you know, we rate it typically from couple hundred megahertz into the gigahertz range, um, maybe two gigahertz or so. Um, that's a pretty good suppression material up there. Okay. Well, thanks. You're um, the other question we get is what's the best way to choose a toroid uh, for proper 
materials. What? <laughs> Check a toroid. Check a toroid. Okay. Check. Oh, so like the material of a toroid. Yeah. What it is. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've done like a video on this before, but in simplest terms, the, the thing that distinguishes ferrite materials, um, I mean, well, they're all, they're all gray, right? So you can't really use color to, no. <laughs> to pick them apart. Um, although you actually do get to be able to see some of the color variations when you stare at them long enough, but we don't um, recommend that. Yeah, we don't recommend that. Um, yeah, but you're going to, yeah, the main thing that's going to distinguish the materials is the initial permeability. So the most accurate way to do it is to get, you know, make or get some type of LCR meter or method for measuring inductance. Um, it's always specified at 10 kilohertz, really anywhere from 1 to 100 kilohertz should be sufficient because they're all, all ferrite materials or most ferrite materials are pretty linear in that range. So you should get the same reading between those two, those two places. Um, and then you can just go to a table and match up the properties of, you know, this is a thousand permeability. This is 2000 permeability. Um, you know, that's going to be your best method for doing it if it's a part that can be measured like a toroid or can easily have a air core inductance calculated for it. Um, now, even a pretty cheap LCR meter is going to be, you know, a couple hundred dollars at least if you don't have something. I mean, you could probably set something up with an oscilloscope to be able to perform that measurement too. Um, but yeah, I mean, an inductance measurement is really going to be the key thing for you know, differentiating those. Now, if you have two materials, say you have two toroids, one's a, you know, good example from what we said before, one's a 43 material, one's a 31, uh, a really easy test that you probably do have the equipment sitting around for that you could do, use is just check resistance right on the surface. So if you were to take a, um, you know, this tile, for example, yeah, if you were just to probe two spots on the material here for resistance using just a, you know, whatever cheapy multimeter, uh, the 31 material is probably going to give you a reading of, you know, hundreds to thousands of ohms. The 43 material being nickel zinc and high resistivity will probably look like an open unless you have a really, really sensitive multimeter. Um, and if you do have a really sensitive multimeter, you might be reading something you know, in the order of mega ohms. And you said that we had videos on it before? Yeah, there's a, you know, how to decode your ferrite. I forget what the name of it is exactly, but we we'll can link it in the bottom. Yeah, we can link it. Okay, <laughs> just in case to go in more depth. Um, okay, that's all I have for you today. Um, do you have anything else to share with our friends? No, I don't, okay. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know if I was supposed to say something there, but I don't. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for joining. Comment if you want anything to be gone over in the next few videos. Bye. Bye. Bye.